Hi, I'm Toby and welcome to another episode of The Joys of Mathematics. Today I'm not going to throw any formula or equations at you, I'm just going to tell you a story. Now behind the story you might be able to find, hidden away in there, the essence or some of the intuition behind calculus. But don't worry because this is not going to be a mathematical story. This is going to be a story about a guy called Bob who lives in a little hut in some snowy mountains. So I want you to just sit back and relax and enjoy listening to this story. Don't stress too much about trying to turn your brain on, but hopefully you might learn something along the way. So, like I said, this story is set in the mountains. Now, it's a very windy and stormy day in the mountains. We've got a lot of wind. A couple of things happen, though, which are not ideal. The first one is that one of the trees, one of these little happy trees on the mountain over here, is blown over and it falls. Not such a happy little tree now. The second thing that happens in the windstorm is that a little section of the bridge, which is made of logs here and connects one hill to another over a river, it breaks away and falls. What it's left in its place is just a couple of wires that used to hold the logs together. The logs that have broken off don't fall straight down into the river, but they are blown sideways a little bit to this grassy meadow down here. Okay, so all of this goings on sort of concerns Bob who lives in his little hut, and he comes out to check that everything is okay. Let's draw Bob here. Now this story is about the links that Bob goes through to do the right thing. Now the reason he's so concerned and that he comes out of his hut is he knows that down here in the meadow where the wood has fallen, this meadow are a couple of deer who are very dear to him. They're a couple of friends of his and he's concerned. He wants to make sure that everything is all right and that no one's been hurt and down in this meadow. Now to be able to get down there and check, he's going to have to cross this bridge of logs. Now obviously the problem with that is that a section of the bridge is missing. And Bob's going to have to come up with a plan. He does have one idea in mind and that is that looking at one of these fallen trees beside him on the hill, he thinks he might be able to use that tree, lay it down along the wire that's left in place on the bridge and create a little ramp for himself to walk down. Now there's only one problem that Bob really needs to consider about this plan. And that is that, you know, we've got a curved bridge and if we lay a flat tree down on this wire, that part of the bridge there is going to be straight. And he doesn't want it to end up being so steep that he just slides down it and isn't able to climb back up to get home. You know, Bob has also some very old shoes that are completely worn away on the bottom. So he doesn't have much friction coming from his shoes. One thing that Bob knows from past experience is what kind of slopes and ramps he is able to walk up with these shoes of his. Now, obviously walking along flat ground is going to be easy. Walking straight up and down a wall is going to be impossible. But what Bob does know is that exactly in between vertical and horizontal, if I was to draw a line exactly in between them there, that is the limit of how steep a ramp Bob can walk up with his shoes without slipping. Okay, so if we know that this little flat tree lying down here on the ramp is going to be as steep as this or less, it'll be fine, there'll be no problem. So Bob needs to check and the way that he's going to measure how steep the little tree ramp would be once it's on the bridge is that he picks up a pebble. Now I've got one here by the camera and he holds the pebble to his eye and he looks at the hole in the bridge and he just uses the pebble to measure as sort of a measuring stick how many pebbles he think could fit in the area vertically between the missing logs. So if we had a little triangle, this is one log, this is the other log. These are the missing logs that would have fit in along here and this is the wire that's just in their place holding them together. 
he measures how many pebbles he thinks with his eye could fit down here and how many could fit across here. Now what Bob measures just by using his little pebbles is that he thinks he could fit three pebbles in this height and three pebbles in this width. What it means for us is that our slope is exactly as tall as it is wide. It also means that it's exactly the same as this line here because this line here is as tall as it is wide. So if everything is fine and our pebbles were a good little measuring stick, then a little straight ramp here should be just deep enough for Bob to be able to handle with his shoes. So let's go ahead with it. Bob's pretty strong and he carries the tree down to the slope and puts it in here. So now a section of the bridge is our little tree, but it's pretty easy to cross over. So if you're here to learn a thing or two about mathematics, then what we just did is differentiation. We had a curved line, which is our entire bridge, and we found the slope at a point on our curved line just by zooming in on an area of interest and treating that area as a straight line. In fact, in this case, we had a tree in there. So this section of our curve was treated as a straight line and we found the slope at that point. So let's keep going. Bob walks along the bridge and comes down into the meadow. Now, what are in the meadow are a couple of deer. Let's try and draw maybe one of those on. Little head, might be a bit hard to see. Some little legs, four. Um, I don't know if deer have a tail. So Bob has gone down into the meadow and the first thing he notices is that all the deer are alive. The piece of the bridge hasn't fallen directly onto any of them, so that's really good news. However, what he does start to get concerned about is the fact that quite a lot of the grass down here is now being covered by this section of the bridge. Now, it's kind of concerning because he knows there's not too much grass down here to begin with. And he starts to think, you know, maybe with this grass gone and being inedible to the deer because it's covered in a part of the bridge, maybe the deer are going to run out of food. Bob knows exactly how much grass a single deer will go through in a season. So he knows how much grass is needed to be down here in this meadow. And because the meadow is just a rectangle, he knows how much grass was there originally. What Bob really wants to know to make sure his little friends are gonna be safe is he wants to know how much of the area of the grass is now gone. He wants to subtract this amount from the total amount of grass and make sure it's still enough to be able to feed the deer. If it turns out there isn't enough grass to keep them alive, Bob will probably have to call for help to move the section of the bridge out of their meadow or look for some other solution. So Bob gets down here onto the meadow and he thinks, okay, I've got another problem. This part of the bridge that fell into the meadow is a very irregular shape. It's not a circle and it's not a square. Otherwise, I would be able to find its area quite easily. So he thinks, well, maybe I can approximate this as a circle or I can use my trusty little pebble to try and measure how many circles would fit inside this irregular shape. Now I'm going to draw it up here to make it a bit easier for us to see. So this is the shape of the part of the bridge that's fallen into the meadow. Like I said, it's quite irregular because it's not just one log, it's a few sections of different logs that have fallen. Kind of looks like the shape of Australia now that I look at it, but that's just a coincidence. So Bob thinks, okay, I, all I know is, is how to find the area of something like a pebble if it's approximated to be perfectly round. So I've got a few of these pebbles. I can lay them out. I can get them from the riverbed and lay them along the shape. Um, and if I take my pebbles and lay them around, maybe I can lay them on top of the shape. Um, and I can just sort of count how many fit into this shape. Now, that's one way you could do it. You could count up the how many pebbles approximately equal the area of our unknown shape. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pebbles. Um, that might be an okay approximation. If you find the area of these nine pebbles, you can just say that's the area of the shape. 
but you know it's not perfect we have some overhang here so we're saying that this area is part of the shape when it isn't we've got some gaps in here between the pebbles because they don't perfectly fit together and whilst this is an approximation it's very far from perfect so what bob can do to get a better approximation of this area is to get some smaller pebbles now if he lays some smaller pebbles on here there's going to be less of a gap between the pebbles so less area that's not being measured and when a pebble does overhang it doesn't go too far off our area it's still not perfect we still have a bit of overhang we still have a bit of gap between our pebbles but we're getting a bit better so there we are that's what our new measuring technique would look like We've still got a bit of area in here that's not being measured correctly by these pebbles. We've still got a tiny bit of overhang, but it's definitely a lot better than what we had before. You know, this might be good enough for some people, but Bob, he really cares about these deer and he doesn't want to take any chances with approximations. He wants to know exactly, will these creatures be okay? Will they have enough grass? How much of their grass has been taken away from them by the bridge? we really want to know exactly okay so this isn't good enough for bob he looks around him and he sees the river bed and he sees that it's made up of sand now sand i guess you could say is a very tiny tiny pebble bob knows that the smaller the size of the item he uses to approximate this area the more accurate it's going to be so he thinks to himself you know what it's worth it i'm going to get the sand bob lays individual grains of sand in little columns down the shape and he has to count exactly how many grains of sand he's placed he knows the area of each grain of sand because they're perfectly round grains of sand and he takes his time to lay them out one by one grain by grain along the shape it takes so long for him to do this that while he's laying them down it's no longer day it turns to night and then it turns to day again and then it turns to night but bob keeps going because he is really dedicated to these creatures and he wants to do what he can to be as accurate as possible a couple of days later we are all done it's back to sun and we've completely filled our shape with grains of sand if you asked bob how many grains of sand he laid down on that shape he might say it seemed like an infinite number but we were just getting very close to infinity there's certainly hundreds of thousands of little grains of sand on that shape but the good news is that bob has an almost perfect knowledge of the area of this shape here so he pulls out his notepad, he works out the area of the original garden, he subtracts his now known area of the shape here. He works out how much grass would have been needed to feed a couple of these deer down in the meadow. He works it all out. Luckily he finds that even with the amount of grass that's missing, there is still going to be just enough grass to feed everyone in the meadow. So this is really good news and Bob feels really great with this peace of mind that people are going to have enough to eat. With that, Bob climbs back up the hill, walks across the bridge, across our little ramp made from a tree, and he walks home for the night. He, he had a pretty big excursion, but at least he's happy that everyone is okay. Now what we did here when we calculated the area of the shape was actually integration or the essence of integration. What integration means is that we can find the area of any shape by slicing it up into infinitely small pieces. And this is a pretty useful thing to be able to do, to find the area of any shape and to find the slope of any line, even if it's curved. So I hope you learned a thing or two from Bob's little adventures in the mountains today. Thank you for watching. This is your invitation to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more content like this. And I hope you have an absolutely mathematical day.